Millen Taylor. Wow, the, I love the way spirit blends everything yeah. together. Yeah. I mean, the songs, Brenda's incredible information that she shared with us, and also the title of today's talk, I don't even know if it's correct in the bulletin, is Ready to Take a Risk. Um, sometimes I'm apt to uh, shift around the titles here and there, but it's all, we're finishing up, we're finishing up our theme for the month, which is falling in love with life. And we're closing that theme, but hopefully, definitely, we're not closing that, that whole vision in our lives to fall in love with life with all of its, its ups and downs and ins and outs and chaos and all kinds of upheaval, plus its peace, its love, its joy, its integrity, and its, its, its infinite possibilities, because it's infinite. It's, it's absolutely infinite, and it is my most heartfelt prayer that the obstacle to loving life, whatever that is, if you have it in your life, is, has been working this month through all the talks to shift into a better and a more of a, a flow of falling in love with this incredible life. And I tell you, the fall, the autumn season, always brings up such gratitude for me. I, I mean, I'm sure all of us, we look around and we see the colors of the trees, and we see the leaves falling from the trees, and, and the beauty of Mother Nature, which is so important as Brenda and her incredible daughter who is taking a stand to keep our Earth beautiful. This is important for us. So we are the way showers. We are the light bearers. And so in this month, possibly you have begun to shift into a whole new way of being, of showing up, of letting go and letting God. Maybe you have taken an inspired action and perceived it in a new way. Maybe you have used your will and your your, yeah, your will, your human will to keep your vision in place and always in, at the top of your mind, even when it doesn't look like it's not coming forth, to keep that vision and to stay grounded and centered in knowing that limitless possibilities truly do exist in this universal power and presence of life itself. And knowing that, is in a very expanding course of, of walking this path that we can be on. We're expanding. We truly are with this limitless potentiality because we can have the vision, but the universe will always show us how it's going to happen. We can't plan those things. And that's what always gives me such joy. We can't plan it. We hold our vision. We think we're planning it, but really you're not because the universe has got all different ways of filling in those blanks because it's the unknown, which we're gonna talk about today. And it's important to acknowledge the, the fact that in our human experience, facing obstacles takes courage and willingness. Willingness to step into that unknown, that which looks like, because even when we think we know something, we're in a familiar job, a familiar relationship, Whatever it is, it feels very familiar. It's not. It can change in an instant. Trust me. I know. And I'm sure most of you in the audience know. It can change in an instant. And it looks like you're stepping into the unknown. But in that unknown is where the good of God resides. It's there to support us all of the time. That's what these teachings <laughs> tell us. And it's what I carry so deeply in my heart. It is a fact, it is in fact, it can feel like, in fact, risky business, which is the name of the talk. But living a God-filled, empowered life that you are meant to live is worth the risk. Being in integrity with yourself. And it does take great courage to step out into what looks like the unknown in our, in our lives. It, it can be feel very scary, and I have to. He's not here, so I can talk about it. My son was here last week. <laughs> he doesn't watch the videos, so. <laughs> he was here for the first time in five years with his, my grandsons, his two five-year-old uh, twins. This is two, right, okay. <laughs> but the point is, he took a chance. He walked out on, he quit his job. 
He stood in integrity, so I want everybody to know who goes to Riverwinds um, and who watches this YouTube video that Chef Ian Plage is no longer at Riverwinds. Can I hear him, please? I want to hear him, please. Yeah. Um, but he stepped out into the unknown. What courage that took. And already he's gotten all these offers, and he's starting a new job very soon, next week. But the thing is, he stepped into the unknown, and it, it takes great courage. We don't know how the universe is, I mean, when you look, when you take one of those big steps, you don't know how the universe is going to line things up for you, and it always lines things up for you. It truly does. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to quote from, let's see if I can say this, Anais Neen. So she said, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. It's so beautiful. But still, we are afraid. We're afraid of that risk. I also love this line from a Daniel Neymar's song, who I'm really, really liking Daniel Neymar, where he says, I'm afraid of taking chances as if I could damage my soul. We can't damage the soul. This is the great news, folks. We can't screw it up. Uh, this is the greatest thing that, that exists in my brain. Because that constant power for good is always operating in and through each and every person, each and every one of us, whether we know it or not. It's just easier if you know it. It's more confident. And this is a note from the universe, those daily uh, emails that you can get, T-U-T. So I always love them. This one is, this is from the universe, came in my mailbox. Worry? Why? Do you really think anything could go wrong? Are you not eternal? Have you forgotten how much you're loved? <coughs> Don't you see how far you've already come? Could you possibly be in better hands? Is there not chocolate in every land? <coughs> the universe. <laughs> And anyone that knows me knows that that last part was like, oh yes. These notes are very eerily, um, very in alignment with my thinking, because I expect chocolate wherever I go, in body or not. Anyway, so why are we afraid to take a risk? What is holding us back? Why are we so, so afraid to take this bold, inspired action to turn an obstacle into an opportunity? I know personally, I was having, um, I have a series of coaching sessions, and earlier this week, my coach was giving me some right on wisdom, and it looked what looked like a huge obstacle. As she was giving me counsel, my entire body you went into that, if you are familiar with that, where your stomach, stomach starts flipping, and you're like, oh. <laughs> and after her pearls of wisdom, she said, how do you feel about this? And my answer was, you don't want to know. Because the truth is, the action that she suggested absolutely terrified me. I mean, I remember uh, many, many years ago, Reverend Ian Taylor told me, oh, you're going to start a spiritual center. And my stomach totally did the same thing. It flipped. I said, no, I'm not. He said, oh, yeah, you are. Any of you that know Reverend Ian, yeah. oh, yes, he's from Trinidad, so he had that accent. And yes, you are. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm really not. But six years later, here I am. And that was 10 years ago. So anyway, the truth is that taking the action, in taking the action, she suggests that it would move me into a deep, a deeper understanding of what it is within me. And I know it's within all of us when those things come up that flip our stomach. What is that, that belief that is holding us back from experiencing our good that we're so afraid of? We are so, we live in this fear. And a lot of it boils down to the fear of failure, whatever it is. The fear of not doing it right, not doing it good enough, of screwing up your life. And we don't want to fail because we, didn't, we don't want to look bad. And we don't want to have people say what they think they will say if we don't get it what we think they will say and it's really not even about them remember what everyone else thinks is none of your business it is truly if we if we get nothing else that whatever anyone says or thinks is none of my business my business is me your business is you 
That's it, period. So what is failure really? I mean, we, we hear that. And I, I looked up in the dictionary and it defines it as a condition or fact of not achieving the desired end of a result. And I really like that because the words condition and fact with a small f, because they have tremendous metaphysical significance. We know, as metaphysicians, that conditions and facts have nothing to do with the capital T truth. We know that these are all passing things in our lives, experiences, conditions. They are not the truth of who we are, our eternal self, that self that knows all, that is all, that sustains us, that's connected to the great I am. We know that these conditions, so, but then we're afraid of them. We're afraid to step into the greatness, as the Marianne Williams uh, writing states, where we're, we're stuck in playing little. We're so stuck in it. And now it's time for us, when we're ready though, when we're ready to step out into the greatness that we truly are. The truth is that there is one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now from Ernest Holmes. That is the truth. My life is perfect. No matter how it looks, no matter what I'm going through, it's absolute perfection. Let's do that together. There is one life. Power there position. Is there, there is, is one, one life. life. <laughs> the life of God. The life of God. That life is perfect. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now. Okay, and so it is. And that's the truth. That's the truth. In fact, if we allow them to, our failures actually can help us wake up to the fact that we are one in nature with God. We are one, part of this unity of all that is, was, and ever shall be. And I trust that the universe really does have our back. I really do believe that no matter what, there is a power for good that is always with us, that is always protecting us, that is always loving us unconditionally, and it prepaves our road into the future. And uh, these so-called failures can help us realize that this presence and power of the universe is always available to us. But do we turn within? Do we get centered? Do we take that breath? And do we go into that meditative state where we connect with this great I am and just be? Because that is where the power is. There is no challenge that's too great, no failure too big for God. Impossible, impossible. The most successful authors and artists and inventors and actors, etc., have developed this ability to deal with a massive amount, with massive amounts of failure. And you know if you're an artist and you're in the room and you're an actor and you're in the room, that this is true. I mean, this is like built into it. And so high achievers rarely think of failure as an end in itself. Instead, they believe that it is delayed success. It's an opportunity for a yes to come in. It's been said that a loser says, I don't even like that word, but anyway, that a loser says, this is in, in our mentality, I can't do it. While a winner says, I can't do it yet. So all we have to do is add that one word at the end and it makes us a winner. Yet, yet. About failures, I want to read this because Ernest Holmes has a, a really nice passage in the Science of Mind textbook about this. So I want to read this to you. Hear what he says. Science of, uh, by the way, that Ernest Holmes founded Science of Mind, which is what we are, New Thought Science of Mind spiritual community. And this is what he wrote in his book. If we appear to have failed, we should realize that there are no failures in the universe. We should completely erase the idea of failure by stating that there are no failures. If we believe that we failed last year, we will likely, we will be likely to fail again this year unless that false thought is erased. Break down everything except the recognition of the one perfect power which is not contingent upon any place, person, or condition, time of year, or anything but itself. A demonstration is made when it comes straight through from this truth. So we erase any idea of failure. 
Now here is where, he's still writing, now here is where it looks as if we are not telling the truth to ourselves. But we are declaring the truth about spirit that indwells in us. The spirit never fails. Affirm this until it is a very part of your being. It's so powerful. Spirit never fails. Your spirit never fails. And just keep affirming that. There's only success in divine mind. Back to Holmes. This word blocks out from the book of my remembrance any sense of lack, limitation, want, or fear of failure. There is no failure, no person to fail. Failure is neither person, place, nor thing. It is a false thought and has no truth in it. It is a belief in lack and there is no lack. It is a belief in limitation which does not exist. That's why I love Ernest Holmes. It's so uplifting. If you're having a down day, if you're having a down day, just pick up the, the textbook. That's on page 302 and 303 for those that are going to go right home and read that. So I want to bring to you one more concept, one more idea. It is this. The answer to every problem already exists in the mind of God comes in, the, the problems come in with solutions. And you are, you are in the mind of God, and the mind of God is flowing in and through and as you every single minute. This we must accept, and accept it with gratitude, with enthusiasm, accept it. Accept it as you would accept the best news you ever heard, and then use it. Big proponent of action, use it. You know, don't just come and hear a whole bunch of really inspiring, uplifting words. Take those words, take those ideas that trigger in the truth within each of us and use it. Use it to live life. Use it to manifest what you truly desire to, to experience in your life. You gotta use it. Hmm. So what is this risky inspired action that we must take in order to turn every obstacle into an opportunity? It is, a, is it, could this be, could this be what is holding us back? Is it a conversation that you need to have with someone that you don't want to have? Yeah, anyone ever have that? Yeah, you just don't want to have it, but you know you got to do it to be an integrity. Don't you hate that, Norman? <laughs> Is it more, happens more often than you think. <laughs> is it asking for help? That's a big one for a lot of us. It is, a, is it enrolling in a class? Is it balancing your checkbook after being unconscious about your finances for maybe a month or two? <laughs> is it making a sales call? Mm -hmm. Is it consciously choosing to view a situation in a different way? Is it taking a stand for what you know is right? That takes courage. Or is it leaving a toxic job or relationship? It takes a lot of courage to lose. What is it? Only you know. Remembering who you are and not the disguise of fear of end uncertainty and separation. That's not the truth of who you are. You are a divine being of God, of the light, of this infinite potentiality, we don't even have to call it God, we call it spirit, higher power, whatever you want to call it. It's this universal intelligence which is always for us, through us, and expresses as us. As us. And if, if you're like me, you'll take the next bold step which can feel very frightening. It can feel intimidating as we step out into what we think is the unknown. But remember, it was planted there by your vision. And once you have a vision, it goes into the law of divine mind, and that's where it's already taking place. Are you open and receptive to allow the manifestation to come through? It's what our woman's group was all about. Limitless possibilities. Next workshop is the manifestation of those limitless possibilities. You have to be open and receptive to hear, to hear that guidance when it comes through. You are being you are being internally nudged to take this step. And you know what will happen if you don't. Once you get in touch with that intuitive state, you know that, and we can call it our gut. You don't follow your gut. Have you ever said, oh gosh, I knew I was supposed to do that, and I didn't. I knew I was supposed, 
But that's your intuition. And when you don't listen to it, the nudge gets a little firmer. And then it may feel like a push. And then it may feel like a kick in the pants. And then it might feel like that universal two by four. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I've asked the universe is to deliver things a little more gently to me. I don't want any more wax. I'd like to like move into, you know, gracefully, as graceful as I can be. It is said that this is an interesting little story and analogy, baby birds. Baby birds reach a certain size and their moms begin to line the nest with thorns and sharp sticks as a gentle way of encouraging the baby birds to take to the sky on their own. Mm -hmm. And what do you suppose might be going through the mother bird's head as she nudges her chicks out of the nest for their first flight? Is she fearful or concerned for the chick's life? She's sitting there going, oh, God, what am I going to do? I just pushed them out and closed the door on them. <laughs> of course not. Of course us. That's, that's us, the human insane race. That's us. Okay, of course not, because her instincts drive her to action. She knows that something within her babies know how to fly. Of course, that something is divine intelligence working at the level of bird. We all have a different <laughs> We just have this really, it's a little more complicated, I do believe. I think animals really get it a whole lot easier than human beings who have to analyze every single thing and every single thought that they think is the truth, which is just made up anyway. So the important awareness is that the very same divine intelligence that knows how to make these baby birds soar is working in and through and as you and me. It knows how to make us soar through life. When we let go, when we take that breath. <sighs> the only difference between baby birds and ourselves is that we really resist coming to the edge of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. We don't want to step off that edge. It's nice over here. It might not feel comfortable. It might be painful. It might be awful, but it, it's familiar. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to step off of it. But how do we grow? How do we soar into our greatness? Into, into living a life that's filled with joy and love. Come to the edge, he said. We can't. We're afraid, they said. Come to the edge, he said. We can. We're afraid, they said. Come to the edge, he said. They came. He pushed, and they flew. I'm not even going to try to say the name of that person. It's either Greek or French. So, conclusion. The conclusion of our talk is in the final chapter of the book that I based all the talks on and I think it was August, Obstacle is the Way, if you remember that, by Ryan Holiday, great book. He offers some words of wisdom. And I'm going to paraphrase a little bit what he wrote to make it more personal for us. Okay, so this is Ryan Holiday. He writes, It is unlikely that anyone is going to make an armed run at our throne anytime soon. But people make pointed remarks. They will cut us off in traffic. Our rivals will steal our business. We will be hurt. And we can turn all of these to our advantage. Always there is opportunity. Always. It's, if something stands in our way, we can stare it down, not be intimidated, leaning into the problem or weakness or the issue. We can give it everything we have mentally and physically, even though we may not always overcome it in the way we intended or expected. We will emerge stronger. That's true. There is a lightness, he writes, and a flexibility to this approach. We can see the bad things that happen in our lives with gratitude and not with regret because we turn them from disaster to a real benefit. It's choice. It's our thinking. We get to choose how we want to respond to what takes place in life. We don't have to sit around and analyze why this happened to me. What did I do spiritually wrong? What thought was I thinking? The We don't have to do that. The thing is already there, and it could just be, like an accident could just be an accident. Carolyn May says that in her tapes. We're doing that class 
on Thursday night, high consciousness. But it's like, you know, we have to analyze, and especially spiritual types, we have to know what our deep-seated unconscious belief is, who we might not ever know. It is what it is. How do we move forward from there? We have choice. That's not what that's not what he wrote. That's what I just said. So let me get back to finishing up what he said. Because it's so true. I mean, we make ourselves crazy. We don't we know. He says, <laughs> he says, perceive things as they are, leave no option unexplored, then stand strong and transform whatever can be changed. In mastering these three disciplines, we have the tools to flip any obstacle upside down. We are worthy of any and every challenge. Of course, it is not enough to simply say it. We must practice these maxims, rolling them over and over in our minds and acting on them until they become muscle memory. So that under pressure and trial, we get better. We become better people, better leaders, and better thinking. And that's the whole point of affirmations. It's a whole new thought. And so we keep saying it over and over again because we are retraining our, our memory muscle, our belief system, our belief system muscles. We are retraining ourselves to not believe in the maybe some of the things that we have learned growing up that didn't serve us. So to finish this talk off, these are the three things. Let us, let us see every obstacle as an opportunity to go bigger <coughs> as God beings because that's what we are. Take whatever inspired action you can, and then turn what you can over to God. Turn it over, true surrender, let it go, because I of myself can do nothing. And you will find that the block, that what blocked the path becomes the path. What once impeded action advances action, and once what was an obstacle, obstacle becomes the way. And so we step into a life that is really worth living. We co-create our life through our choices. Things happen in life. Let's create a life that is, is the best life that we can live. And let's start it right here and right now. It's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah.